the heck are you stuck on? Stuck on a wrench. So today on RC Guy Garage, we're gonna do a what's in the box. If you're interested in seeing what's inside the mystery box, I didn't even say what was in the box. Just let's go. I guess we'll do that box right there so you can see right here in the box or on the box you can see we got a earthquake 3.5 nitro ready to run 4x4 earthquake truck the face of the box right there there you go there's the face of the box <laughs> oh my god here's the side of the box with the uh, specifications giving you obviously the motor type which is a 0.21 or 3.5 cc nitro motor a two-speed transmission four-wheel drive you know just all the stuff that's just right there uh important aluminum capped big bore oil filled shocks uh chassis is a three millimeter 6061 aluminum uh fuel tank capacity 125 cc's and then obviously you know composite disc brake and then 2.4 gigahertz Radio with uh, steering trim, throttle trim, all that good stuff right there. So here's the available colors that it comes in. It comes in a green, a red, a blue, and that semi-truck looking thing right there, which that's actually pretty cool looking. Right there, needed to actually run 12 AA batteries, which that sucks. Eight for the transmitter, four for the vehicle. So obviously that's telling you right there, it must be one of their, old, must be one of their older radios, so... Um, yeah, we'll just probably run it out of the box and then we'll, we'll figure it out after the fact. You're going to obviously need nitro fuel and a glow plug igniter. Uh, suggested Red Cat parts, obviously they give you there right there. And then, actually it looks like we already do know what we got. So it looks like I did get the blue. I don't even know. I don't even know what box I got. So there you go. There's the side of the vehicle right there. Showing it looks like a nice polished aluminum exhaust. Um, looks like kind of like a race car more than it does a truck. So it's got like that, you know, flattened low down look, which is pretty sweet looking. So, um, on this side, nothing but what was on the other side. And then we're back on there. Let's just set it up for a bird's eye view so you can see what's actually inside the box. So that's that OTB that I keep talking about. So if you're interested in seeing what's inside that box, kind of like honestly I am, let's open up that box and see what you get. So it looks like we've got some tape here, yellow tape. So it looks like this thing's probably been sitting around for a little while. Tape is yellowed. Take the top off here. Hey, look at that. All right, so looks like it must have, how do you, all right. So I guess we'll kind of slide it out this way. Now, you know what? I'm going to just flip it upside down and go like this. <laughs> That'll work. All right, so in the bottom of the box, <laughs> you got the instruction manual. Uh, yeah, just a basic Red Cat instruction manual for nitro vehicles. And then you can see right there, that's actually looking pretty sweet. So... Pop the little side pieces off the tires here. This looks more like a 110 scale, not 1 eighth. Uh, transmitter looks like transmitter is actually in here somehow. So inside this mess of a box, we got the transmitter, which... This doesn't look like it's the, uh, this looks like an updated transmitter, actually. This isn't the old style. Yeah, no, what are they talking about? This ain't, this ain't the old style transmitter. This takes four batteries. So this transmitter right here actually does take four batteries. Like, uh, what the heck? All right, well, that's actually pretty cool. Inside this bag right here, the rest of the bag, looks like you get a bind plug and obviously an antenna tube, which we hardly ever use. And then, uh, what the hell is this? Is this the baggie that has, 
It's literally a Ziploc bag that has a piece of paper in it. All right, anyways, well, we'll throw some uh, batteries inside of here. Um, we do have to do, this is a nitro vehicle, so we are going to have to do a break-in procedure for this bad boy right here. Um, bad, the body is actually pinned on. Let's pop this stuff out of here. Pop the body off. Ooh, look at that. Peel off the plastic. It's not too bad. It's a neat looking body. Even has like a little uh, protective portion right here for uh, where it rubs against the exhaust or comes into contact with the exhaust. Pretty cool. Yeah. I think it'll rip. The back is definitely uh, way more plush than the front. says it was uh, oil shocks. Didn't it say it was aluminum capped oil shocks? Let's see what the specifications say. Big bore aluminum capped big bore oil filled shocks. How do they consider that? That's plastic. How do you figure that's, that's aluminum? It's not aluminum. What the hell are they talking about here? Tires are pretty uh, squishy. Squishy on the sides here. Uh, it's a pretty lightweight vehicle. Looks like it's got a plastic... Looks like it's got a plastic spur gear on there. I don't know if I like the idea of that. Plastic spur gear? Pretty interesting uh, hose rooting here. It's like it's actually designed that way. Little, little pull cord for little pull ring for the uh man, this is kind of funky. Alright, where where did the batteries go? That's a good question. On the side of the box it said that it had oil. Are those really metal caps? This doesn't feel like it. That's nah, plastic. What are you talking about? There's a uh, little tag right here on the uh, pull start, which I'm trying to get to it. This thing has been sitting around for quite a while here. So this basically just talks about pull start instructions. Kindly be noted that the usage for the pull. Starter's line, around 40 millimeters, and P, please pull the starter gradually without bare strength. Okay, whatever. <laughs> it was cardboard action inside. Well, it's got kind of like a, an interesting hose rooting kind of thing happening here. Funky. I gotta say, that, that is kind of funky. Alright, well, we've actually got brand new nitro fuel, so let's uh let's find out where the actual batteries are, which looks like there's something under here. Ah, uh, that can't be it. That's the receiver. must be on this side then yeah there we go the little battery box all right so let's throw four double-a batteries in there four freshies I hope all right we got four fresh batteries for the actual uh, vehicle itself
huh? Fits one way better than it does another way. It's definitely not, uh, not a good design here. For the way this plug is. I'll tell you that right now. There's no way for this uh, thing to even fit in here. What the hell are they doing? So it looks like, looks like we're going to do a little bit different rooting here. That's really dumb. What the heck are they thinking? It's like, a, it's like an afterthought or something. What the hell, guys? Well, you're going to have to figure out how to actually get the uh, battery box back on. Once you put your wires in there, it's kind of going to be a pain in the neck, so we'll just leave it as is. Yeah, I've got it pretty close. But, uh, yeah, the battery box is, or that battery box is kind of a fail in my book right there. So there's a weak point right there, that little battery box, kind of dumb. Put this back on. Receive a box. Even though on the side of the package that it said that the the uh, transmitter took four uh, eight batteries, it only takes four. So, so I am glad about that. So other than me having zero patience for you know wiring and stuff like that, uh, we'll see. We gotta run a couple of tanks through this thing. What we'll do is we'll take a um, two millimeter hex driver, or whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna undo this little air filter here. And this is stuff that um, literally most like gas and nitro people know. I'm gonna take the air filter off because they don't they don't ship it through the factory with oil, uh, an oil filled I guess air filter. So. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my gun oil. I'm just going to drizzle some oil on there, just like that. I'm going to put it in a plastic bag. Just like that. And I'm basically just kind of like massage the oil filter, uh, the air filter in a plastic bag. Just to kind of coat the actual filter itself. Just drizzle it on. I have to be perfect. Just like that right there. Put it in the bag. Just squish it all around. What it does is it will help uh, trap some of the contaminants and pretty much that's what it should look like right there. Reinstall it. got like a little cross X pattern or whatever just match that up put your screw back in no one else wants an extra strength so per the instructions uh, for the manufacturer, what they want is a new engine break-in procedure. They want you to obviously elevate the vehicle off the ground, put it on the box or whatever. Uh, be careful pulling the ripcord. You know, don't like rip it like a beast. It's like it literally says that. Run it through a couple of tanks of gas, just idle, which it's a real small tank of fuel. So it should go pretty quick. And then uh, run it at, for its third tank, three-quarter throttle. And then... By the fourth tank, you should be ready to adjust and set up. So let's see if we can actually get this accomplished today. So here's our block. I'm going to throw this thing on. We'll face it this way. Transmitter on. Power on. Put 
give it a couple of uh, primes by plugging the exhaust port and pulling on the Fista Prime the motor. Looks like we've got fuel in there now. So I'm going to take our little glow plug igniter, toss the glow plug igniter onto the glow plug, give it a couple pulls. Prime it up a little bit more. Seems like it wanted to go. Seems like it wants to go, but I can't tell if we've got fuel in there yet or not. I think we do. Looks like we got some bubbles. Sounds like it almost wants to go. Jesus. It's really got a kick. I'm going to go check my um, glow plug igniter and see if it's charged up enough. All right, so put on the charge, throw the stuff back on, prime it up. It's got fuel. Sounds like it's close, man. Might be flooded. I'm gonna go get a uh, wrench and pop that glow plug and see if we're flooded. So let's see if we are, in fact, flooded. Slash. Let's see if this, uh, let's see if this glow plug ignites. Oh, yeah. Night is good. Must be just too much fuel. Let's throw it back in. I'm going to leave it a little loose. See if I can get it to fire this way. Definitely fires up. All right. Loosen that just for a touch. almost feel like I almost feel like it's getting way too much fuel which I know it should be but I'm gonna back that off just a touch just let it breathe So I think it's really 
It's got, I know it's got to break in, but I think it's got way too much fuel. So I'm going to... Turn this in until it seats. I'm going to do it uh, two and a half turns out. Let's see if that's good enough. So one, two, and a half. I'm going to loosen this plug again just so it can breathe. Still might be too much. That's my guess. Yeah. Dying. I think it's getting washed, man. Like bad. So let's go. One, two. Turns out. Let's see what happens. As soon as we tighten that up, I think we're literally flooding it out. So let's go one and a quarter. Let's see what we got with that. Let's keep messing with it. Kind of interesting how much it's fighting. Yeah, you can hear it struggling. It basically, it's flooding itself out. So, I wonder if the glue plug is junk. Glow plug is actually nothing wrong with it, man.
just uh, after fighting with it for a little bit. It is running. It's flooding itself out. It keeps flooding itself out. Alright, so I don't know if you can see, but I did end up changing out to the newer fuel that I had, and I also changed out the glow plug, and everything's the same, and now it's running. So I'm pretty sure that the Max is probably suffering from the same, uh, I guess, condition, bad fuel. But running smooth now, just letting it run it through its tank, just letting it run through its tank, and then, uh, yeah, just got like half a tank to go. Then we'll do some three quarter runs, and then burn that tank through, and then it's ready to rip. Alright, so we just manually stopped it by you know, obviously just putting your finger on the end of the stinger. And um, tank is, you know, pretty much empty. We got like an eighth of a whatever uh, thing of gas in there, a thing of uh, nitro in there. We're just going to let it cool down, which it's actually, you know, feels nice. Nice little hand warmer right now. I'm not sure exactly what the temperature is. Hey, Google, what's the temperature? What's the temperature? So you can see it's 48 degrees, so it's it's pretty nice out. So it'll cool down quick enough. In Plymouth, it's currently 48. <laughs> yeah. So what I can tell you already, it's way too rich.
feel pretty good? What do you think? Getting close. Let it cool down for a little bit. It's actually sounding pretty good now. Uh, we're really close. Still kind of breaking it in. All right, just, just chucked the batteries in here real quick, strapped them in, uh, getting it ready for tomorrow. I put the fan inside of there. It's, uh, glued down what I ended up doing is I actually ended up using that brush on glue and I brushed basically every single blade in every connection point and then I just fired it up right now one of those things don't uh, don't think you can plug the fan in to like your charger and then turn it on to help speed up the glue because what it does is it actually creates kind of a um, Super glue cotton candy effect. Yeah, that just happened. So anyways, it's all set now. But uh, we're just gonna power it up real quick. And I'm feeling minimal vibration now. And the air feels good. So yeah, that's a lot better now. <laughs> 